Hey guys and welcome to another video. Now, in this video, we're going to be adding some final touches to our video game and also working on how our cube collides with other objects. Um, in the next video after this, we'll also be working on making some actual gameplay, which will get very interesting. Now let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click player, click add component, and uh, create a new script. We're going to call this player collision and hit enter. Now uh, the script which we just created is right here. Oh my god. So we're going to double click on it and it's going to open up for me in Visual Studio Code. Now we're going to delete the first two lines of code and delete this entire thing because we won't be using it for this video. Now we're going to put that bracket there just to keep things nice and organized. And um, the first thing we're actually going to type is going to be um, public player movement, which is public uh, player movement is the name of this. So we're trying to create a variable. So player movement, and we're going to call it movement, and then a semicolon to end that. So you're going to do a command S to save it, minimize that window, and go into player. Now, I'm just going to have to wait for it to load. Okay, so now that it's loaded, we're going to go into player. And here where, this is the script we just created. It says movement, and it says none, because there's nothing inside of movement. To change that, we're just going to drag the actual script and drop it in that rectangle right there. Now uh, let's go back to our script. After we type uh, public player movement and then the movement, we're gonna click a uh, type um void on collision enter and then after that we're gonna make these two brackets and inside them we're gonna type collision collision oh, collision then info now one thing you should know is that C sharp is capital sensitive so in a place if you have to put a capital but instead you put a lowercase letter then it will actually uh, turn out uh, to be an error so make sure that you put your capital letters and your lowercase letters in the proper areas now after we've done that we're gonna go and create. Oh, wait, wait. we're gonna go and create uh, some more of these curly, weird-looking brackets. So, um, once you've created these brackets, inside of it, you're gonna type if, and then create these brackets again, and you're gonna type collision info dot collider dot tag, and then you're gonna put two equal signs. Um, quotation marks, and inside of it, you're gonna type obstacle. So, obstacle is the tag. Now, it can be anything you want, but just for the purposes of this video, it's gonna be obstacle, and I'll tell you why. Now, once you've done that, you can enter again and create even more curly brackets. Inside of these curly brackets, you're gonna type movement dot enabled and then after you type that you're going to type is equal to false and then a semicolon then you're going to do command s to save the code that we have right here and we're going to go into the game now right now what happens is uh, we're going to create an obstacle and let's just see how it collides and just so you know it's going to be very boring. So we're going to call this cube an obstacle, save, and then we're going to drag it in front of the cube we have right now, which is the player. Make sure it's touching the ground. We're going to make it a bit bigger, and uh, we're actually going to apply physics to this. So we're going to go down, add component, rigid body. 
So now the laws of physics are applied to this obstacle. You move it a bit in the middle, and you're gonna hit play. Uh, so there are a, a few errors in our code. Okay, I already caught one. The spelling's bad. False. Um, let's just do a quick check if there's anything else. Nope, I don't think so. So right now, basically, we're gonna see uh, and make sure to watch. How does the player collide with the obstacle? So I'm going to go into play mode, watch it right here, or here, actually, this will be more interesting. Okay, so what happened was right here, you, you may have thought, oh, there's some kind of problem. Actually, there's not. Right here, we said, as soon as the game starts, basically, it is, um, the movement enabled will turn into false. What that does is, you hit player. And go into movement, and right here, the player movement is this. Now, as soon as the game starts, the square collides with the ground, and that's why the square couldn't move. Because as soon as it collided, we in our code we basically said turn it off. Now, to make sure it doesn't do that, uh, right here you might have remembered me me saying about this. That's because we we're gonna tag the obstacle so the square only stops when it hits this. So we're going to scroll up, we're in obstacle right now, and it says untagged, where it says tag. Now, I have obstacle right here, so I can just click on it. If you don't, though, you can go to add tag, hit this plus sign, and then type the name of the tag and click save. I already have it, so I don't need to do that. So now it is tagged as obstacle. So now when we play the game, the it should be back to normal. And we'll, as soon as it hits this, um, uh, the obstacle, the square just stopped. It stopped moving. Like, I can't do anything. So, that's because as soon as it hits an obstacle, our code said that it has to stop. And what I was planning as I was thinking about the game was maybe as soon as you hit an obstacle and you stop, it could be like you lose or like wasted, probably wasted, something like that. So uh, let's play it again, and this time I'm going to try and dodge the obstacle. So let's just wait for it to load. And now that we dodged it, we can keep moving. And uh, you may be able to see here, nothing stopped us. That's because this time, we didn't touch the obstacle. Uh, that's it for this video. We just created obstacles, and uh, in the video after this, we're going to be working on some gameplay. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for future videos.